Hey people, how are you all doing? Back with another tutorial. This one is going to be how to draw old school daggers. It's going to be a bunch of variations, about five I think. I'm going to make them up, I'm going to do each one differently so that I teach you how to do a bunch of different kind of ways, different patterns. So from these five you're about to draw like hundreds of these things. So yeah, it's basically giving like the ideas of how to sort of twist them, shape them, blah 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 blah. All the stuff you need to know. So this is going to be on Procreate, on the iPad Pro. You can do it on paper as well, just copy what I've done there, you just copy and just translate it, you know, as it is. You know, so... Yeah, so I'm going to start off with, on oh, here I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to use a sketching tool, technical pencil, just to begin with, and a red. I've got up here, I've got drawing guy selected, just for now, just for the basic one for this one. And I've got it on symmetry, so it's just got a symmetry line, so basically it just draws both sides at the same time. As long as you click on here and have drawing assist turn on. So it just makes it easy for you to shape, you know, if you do it on paper, you know, just draw both sides the same roughly. So here we go, people. I'm going to start off with a fairly basic one. I'm going to come up from here like a straightish colored line. And once we get to about here, we're going to sort of triangle this sort of in here. So you've got this sort of like triangle V shape just at the top. Once you've got that, create another line down. So you've got this kind of diamond shape. Once you've got that little line just straight down the center. And boom, that's the bottom of blade done. And then once you've got this bit here done, you can flick out, and I'm going to create this curve around. I'm going to do each section is going to be different. So this is going to be like the blade. You can have like the handle bit. And I'm going to separate this into a few different sections. So we're going to create these lines out here, going into like a ball shape just here. And sketch this back. Create this nice kind of curve of the handle. Now in this section just here, I like to make a little feature, you know, some sort of shape or you know something, you know, a little jewel or something to go generally go in that section just there. Once you've got that bit done. Create kind of oval shape just here. And that's the main part of the handle where you kind of grip hold of it. So bring this down a touch. And once you got that done, yeah, I, just, um, I don't know what to call this, but you know, just call it the top, I guess. Um, I'm sure there is a number a name for it. Oh, is it Pommel? Is it Pommel? There's a specific name for this part of the blade. I can't remember what it is. I think I've got it right. I think it's something like a Pommel. If I'm saying that wrong, just correct me. Just put in the... Uh, Comments below and just let me know what it is. So yeah, you usually have this kind of shape. So the main key areas up here, you've got that part, this part, this part, and this part. So you generally break down to the four general sort of sections. And once you've got the four sections, you know, in your head, you can sort of start varying them up. Because you know, you can sort of change one, it will change it dramatically. You can change two, or three, or four. So, you know, it's just this is how you kind of sort of change up the daggers. Once you've got this one done, I'm going to flick out shape here. So I'm going to come off the sides, just come up from the blade. I'm going to add some butterfly wings. So you've got this line curving off, and it's going to come up quite high, and then it's going to come in. Remember to come in a bit of an angle here, and then you want to curve back upwards. Now that's the kind of shape you want. You don't want it to be too sort of straight and narrow. And coming off here, I'm just going to create this line curving down this way, and curving up like so. And all these designs will be really good, so like, you know, sort of back of the forearm or a calf or somewhere like that. So you've got this sort of circular shape here, and I said this little sort of dip just here on the side part. We'll give you that. And now we've got that done, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to come in with my pen now. I'm going to use calligraphy monoline. I'm going to set this to black, and I'm just going to mark in some details so you see how it looks properly. Now, all the brushes I use on here have been un -mod they don't be modified at all, so it's exactly how you'd use them on the iPad Pro in Procreate. So I'm going to start down from the bottom here, just drawing up. Straight line to that bottom bit. Bring these in. I'm just going to create that just there, and when I've got this inside bit here, I'm just going to create this little other shape just on the inside, just like so. Just for extra sort of um, effect. Let's bring that straight line down the middle, just like so. And when we've done the shape here, I'm bringing this little bit so it curves just over this box shape, so this box shape doesn't sit in front. So curve it outwards, curve that outwards, and as I come down, I'm going to loop and curve around. So you get this kind of nice kind of leap to it. I'm going to create this little detail just here, just like so. So it's two simple lines. And just from the outside, I think I'm going to create this curve just here. That would curve up into that handle bit. And once you've got that done, I'm just going to flip this line just up here, like so. It's going to curve around. And when you get to the top part here, you can either have this sort of circling off and then have your design sit behind it. Or you can generally put a break, which I mean like a little shape like this. Put those little dots in the right spots. You know, where you kind of get that, and then you kind of sit off and bring the extra parts on top. So now you've done that, 
I'm going to bring this other one just here. So third one. And this can curve up into a little ball shape on top. So the idea is just kind of stacking sort of, you know, simple designs. So you kind of got this block shape across here, this little curve across here, this little bit of kind of V-shape. You know, it's generally always going to be sort of semicircles, curving to the points, these kind of sort of shapes, you know, or straight shapes like this, or little loops like this. You know, you can make loads of combinations with those basic sort of shapes, and that's the sort of main ones you're going to see generally in old school stuff. And once you've got that done here, I'm going to put some pattern work in. So the main pattern work I'm going to put is a real simple one, so I'm going to bring some lines across like so. Just coming evenly across both ways, and it's going to create this kind of cross hatch pattern. It's a real simple, nice effect. And once you've got that done, you can put little dots on the inside of each one if you want. You don't necessarily have to add dots, but it's just always a nice little feature. And once you've got it done, I'm going to bring this across here, it's going to bring this out, and from this edge, I'm going to create this little wavy kind of line so it's not going to be dead straight perfect. You know, I don't like to be dead straight, I like to give it a little bit of kind of character. So sort of switch up the shape. So like here, when I create it down there, I'm gonna get this little lid, I'm gonna create this little bump, dip it in, and curve it up. Now you wanna keep your shapes fairly simple. You know, you don't wanna to go too complex with the shapes, because if you go too complex, it's gonna take away from it. You know, but you can go complex with your pattern work. Just make sure your line works the right kind of size. You know, you don't need to look too real. Now we've got it done, it's gonna bring a bit of symmetry just there. So just mimicking that line on the outside part just there. Real simple, I'm going to create this curve line just here on that bottom part. I'm going to create a little loop just here. Secondary loop. I'm going to create another little one just here, just like that. Then just real simple, just one, two, you can do three if you want. Just there. You can add other little pattern details if you want, you can do a little nice kind of wiggly line coming down and stuff. A little pattern where you can have little dots. You know, dots like this are a very classic old school pattern, and they look good in any old school design. You can always throw this in there, and they'll always look good. In this side part here, I like to do, I generally do a circle on those parts mainly. And that's generally how you do one old school dagger. I'll colour it in as we go, but for each one, I'll do the outline, and we'll come back to it and do the colouring afterwards. I'm just going to move this one across now, I'm going to bring this one over here so this one's out of the way. So, get rid of that sketch work, we don't need that now. So if you've done it on paper, just rub that out. Gonna go up here. Now for this one, I'm gonna do uh, the one that's not symmetric. So I'm not gonna use the symmetry tool much on this one at all. So again, I'm gonna go red, same way done before, sketching tool, technical pencil. Let's create a new layer just here. So this one's gonna be a curved blade. So I'm gonna use this line as a kind of guide, but I'm not gonna use the uh, symmetry tool too much on this. So what we're going to do, we're going to create this long curve like this. It's going to come to about here. We're going to create this curve outwards like this. And then we're going to create a curve coming up. It's about here. So you see this bottom part here is much wider than what this part here is. And once you've got that done, we're going to create a secondary line. This one's just going to curve up through the centre just to there. And once we've got that bit done here, I'm going to create the um, that kind of handle bit we've done. Now this one's going to be a curve like this, and then it's going to curve the other way. Again, it's going to go into a nice kind of rounded edge. You know, it's very kind of classic of daggers, you know, especially in old school style, to have a nice kind of rounded edge. So it's going to curve up like that. I might put a banner across this one to give you an idea, because each one I'm going to put something different. So this one's got a butterfly, this one might have a banner, another one might have, say, a skull, another one might have a snake, another one might have a rose. Um, yeah, I'm going to do those. That's a good combination, actually. <laughs> So once I've got that, I'm going to follow that line through. I'm going to curve the other way now, just like so. I'm going to sketch a rough line just here. This isn't going to be the pattern. We're just kind of get an idea of like the sort of shape of it. And as it goes up here, I'm going to go into a circular shape that's going to sit on there. So that's my general rough shape of it. And I know I'm going to have a banner, so I want this nice kind of curve, this sort of like S-bend curve, come across here. And another one's going to mimic that shape. I'm going to keep me up at the edges. So it's going to basically kind of fit. So so it is that same shape, kind of curve them around. And you kind of loop your edges in and loop them back out if you want to little kind of V shapes. Just like that if you want. And you can have like a name on the inside bit, so get your rubbish to raise that bit you don't need in there. And 
and come back up to the pattern work just up here. I'm going to create a little line just on this part of the blade just here, not on the blade, on the uh, handle rubber. And I'm going to create this repeated pattern of these kind of curves just like this. Again, this is a very classic old school, you know, sort of pattern. You'll see this a lot. You'll see it on snakes, old school dragons, pretty much on everything, wings and stuff. You know, just a repeated circular curve. Very, very classic. You know, works on pretty much everything. Going to create a secondary circle just inside this one. Real simple like that. I might create just another little curve just around here just to make this part a bit more interesting. And I might add a little secondary line just inside this part, like so. So now we've got it done, I'm going to create another layer, go black, come in with that good look free, monoline again. So about the same kind of thickness. And we're just going to whip in everything on a separate layer, make sure it's on a separate layer. It gets really annoying if it's not on a separate layer. If you draw and hold on here, it will create your line and make it super smooth. Um, it's really handy if you struggle with that, but you can get used to it just doing like a curve. You know, once you get used to the hand motion, you'll find it quite easy. You know, it just takes a little while getting used to the hand motion with this stuff. Now don't worry about if they don't get it perfect because you can always whip it in and if you don't like it just two finger tap and you'll go backwards. You know, it's not like it's permanent, that's the good thing with digital, you know, it's not permanent. You can play around with lines and stuff, you know, and if it isn't quite exactly where you want it, you can just tap to go back. It's one major advantage of digital work over traditional. You know, and like as with traditional love it is kinda of like almost final. You now sometimes it is hundred percent final, you kinda of have to make the choice then and there. You know, you can always go back change and edit with um, digital. You might find this curve a little bit annoying. I always generally find this curve <laughs> a little bit annoying to do, especially when I'm doing it that way. You always find one kind of angle is more comfortable for you. And my lines are going terrible today. And yeah, not perfect, but I do. I'm going to create a sort of semicircle shape, just kind of fit in that gap. I'm going to create a little secondary line that's going to give a bit of symmetry towards this top part as well. Draw a circle, hold it. Get that secondary circle just on the inside, just there. If you tap, you create a perfect circle. But this one isn't quite perfect. I don't want it to be 100% dead perfect, so I'm going to. Sketch it in, leaving roughly around the same sort of space around the outside, hold it, and that'll do it for me. Let's bring in these curved lines just like this. And remember, at this stage, if you want, you can still kind of correct yourself. You know, if there's a little bit you sort of get to and you think, oh, this would have been better if I'd done it this way, you know, just bang it in there. Worst case scenario, it doesn't look quite as good as what you thought, and next time you just know not to do it. Always experiment. I can't sort of stress that enough. You know, it's you no know, no one's got a hundred percent perfect, and there's always our ideas out there. They're going to beat it. You know, but those ideas will always come when people experiment. And no ideas ever come from like someone just saying, "Oh yeah, we did this way." It's nine times out of ten, it's by accident. So yeah, we've got the blade in there, and once you've got this done, you can add extra sort of details again. Again, that that work pattern is a really nice one. Add that other blade part just here. A lot of the pattern work will come with a shading as well. I'm going to put like a little red line that's going to come across inside this part just here, I think. I tend to do it with the old school banners. And again, you can always put like, you know, secondary line repeating itself, which is always a good one. And just up here, I'm going to go semicircle, semicircle. All the way to the top part, just there. And that did it for me. So that's how you do a second one. So again, I'm just going to flick off that line work layer. I'm going to push this all the way over here so that's out of the way and not interrupting us. So that's how you do two. I'm going to go to the third one now. It's going to create another layer again. Same routine. I'm just going to go up here, sketching the tall layer. I'm going to have this one done. I'm going to turn that drawing assist, just kind of get a bit of symmetry for this one. You know, I'm going to do um, should I do the snake, skull, or the rose of this one? I'll do the skull. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to make this blade a little bit wider, so I'm going to come out across a little bit. 
We're going to curve upwards. Then we're going to curve. See, once we get to the back, so we're going to curve this sort of way. I'm going to curve this line inwards. And this one, I'm going to create a bit more of a curve. So it's going to curve inwards like this. So as, as where the old one was that sort of V-shape box, this one's a bit more kind of curvy. And we're going to do a nice kind of curve just on the bottom part, just here as well, I think. Just like that. And that would go up straight line, lean up with that. I mean, don't worry about sketching at the minute because we're going to have this skull, which is going to fit inside this area. So a bit of this isn't going to be seen. But it's always worth sketching so everything's kind of exactly where it's supposed to be. So now we've got it done, I'm going to start from about halfway through this bit. I'm going to curve outwards. And a bit like the one we've done before, but it's going to be kind of in reverse now. So we're going to create this loop around. But it's going the other way this time. See, it doesn't always have to be around the other way. You can always do it the other way. You can do it around the other way. You can do it sort of curved. You can do it around this way. There's lots of different ways to sort of, you know, vary it and sort of change it up. You can have a sort of circular shape just in here. It's going to curve up to there. I'm going to create a little loop just on this one. I'm going to create this kind of handle bit, a bit more sort of like a sort of ball shape. So it's going to be kind of oval, but not as oval as what the um, the first one was. It's going to bring this down, shrink this down a touch so it fits in the paper right. Bit. Sorry, bear me two seconds, just trying to put this to the right bit. I usually use A4, I'm using 4K to try and layer them out, but I'm not used to using this one. So it's not quite as tall as what I normally go for. I'm going to create another two loops just on top of this and then this one I'm going to create this loop outwards quite big come up here to the top second one just in there, a little line another little circle just on the inside for a little detail inside here I'm going to create this little curve like this and we make it again so again just like another pattern just creating this like you know sort of like symmetric you know symmetric kind of sort of space lines and once we've got that done I might create a little line just here, just to sort of box in that sort of shape part. I like that. And that's going to create another layer, and I'm going to sketch in the skull shape roughly. So I want the skull to be fairly big, so it's going to curve. I like this sort of sort of shape. I'm going to bring this line here, curve this around, curve off the bottom, just kind of like this. So you've got this kind of circular shape. Create this curve off the bottom. You know, it's just to kind of get a rough idea of where we're going to sort of angle them at. Because I generally like the dagger to go through the bit behind the eye. So I'm going to create this line to begin with. It's going to create this kind of curve like this. And once I've got that done, I know I want roughly I'm going to have an eye roughly around here. The other eye is going to be roughly here. The nose is going to be here. And we're going to go into teeth around here, I think. And this can curve off to the back of the skull. We'll curve around here. Ooh, Barry, don't die on me. And this bottom part of the job is going to create a curve like this. And it's going to go behind it. So I basically want the blade to come out of the mouth, like so. And once you've got that sort of sketched on here, and the good thing is we can kind of move around and get exactly where we want. So I'm looking at it and I'm thinking I want it to go a little bit higher, so it's a bit more blade at the bottom. So I'm thinking maybe about there. I like that sort of positioning. And I like to get it so it's nice and fairly even. So about this kind of distance from the middle is about roughly almost the same on the other side. So you can see both of these are almost kind of in line with the hand almost. And then I like that. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be that way, but that's kind of how I like to do mine. So I'm going to go to drawing uh, the pen now. So just create another layer, black, calligraphy, monoline. So I'm going to create this curve. Now I'm going to make this shape a little bit more interesting. Now I've kind of got my rough sort of dimensions. So it's going to be that curve line there that dagger's going to go into. This eye is going to be a bit more kind of bendy, so I'm going to create this kind of nice kind of curve to it, like so. Same with the nose, and I'll do the same with the other one. So you're kind of drawing it and just making it a bit kind of wiggly. Like that. And now we've got that done, I'm going to bring this curve around here. Come off here, I'm going to create this little curve. Just come down to where the teeth are. And the teeth are basically going to be circles kind of curving off now you can sort of change them around if you want but to be honest with old school you don't want to go too crazy with the uh, teeth detail you know they generally are quite simple get that around there so you've got the kind of back of the skull and then the bottom jaw i'm going to create this i'm going to get this bottom part i'm going to create this a bit wavy down the bottom 
Bluetooth just here. Nothing too crazy. Just like that. And now we've got that one just kind of drawing these bottom lines here. You can turn the symmetry to on for this bit if you want, but because the height isn't necessarily going to be the same, it can be a bit annoying sometimes. So I'm just going to sketch this bottom part in without the symmetry tool. Same here, because these hearts will be different. If I turn the symmetry on, it's going to do lines down here. But once you kind of get to a point, you know, like here, now I've done that, I know the rest is symmetric. I'm going to click on this, click on Draw and Assist, and I can just speed up the rest, because it's going to do it all symmetric for me. If you're not on paper, you know, a really handy thing to do, and that's um, draw like half it, like draw a line down your paper, draw half. Um, fold the paper in half, and you can like sort of stencil it through it, because you know, when you fold it in half, you're going to see uh, the design underneath, and then you can kind of trace over the top, and then when you have it, you know, perfectly symmetric. I'll do this every video on what I mean by that, if you don't understand. But um, yeah, it's just a very handy, easy way of making something symmetric on paper rather than just trying to sketch it and make it exactly how it should be. So I'm literally just going over these lines, you know, slightly modifying some of them like so they kind of fit right. But all pretty much the same. Oops. Get rid of that sketching layer now. Like so. And there we've got an old school sort of skull one. Let's move you out the way now. Come back in again. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I've got a whole page width, so I know I'm doing this time. Go back to the sketching layer. Create a new layer. And this one I think I'm going to do. I'll do the snake. So this one, rather than doing a symmetric blade again, I'm going to show a different variation of another blade. So I'm going to create this curve from the bottom like this. Curving up like so. From here, just going straight up the vertical. I'll create this a bit wider, so I'm going to create another line just here, I think. Yeah, quite like that. Let's bring that across here. So it looks sort of. It's sadly sometimes having that line in the middle, it just kind of gives you a center point. And once you've got this done, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to actually make this line a bit more center, I think. Yeah, for that. It's going to turn on drone assist just to kind of get a bit of symmetry for this, but to speed this one up. I'm going to create this curve out here. Again, whipping in this sort of shape just like this. I'm going to create this curve upwards for this one. And notice how this one hasn't got no box shape at the bottom. I'm having this one just goes directly straight into that hilt. I'm going to create a curve like this, and I'm going to create another curve on the outside like that. On the inside, I'm going to flip the curve inwards. And this one can kind of go up. A little semicircle shape just there. I'm basically just creating kind of pattern work. I might have displayed over a little bit, it's kind of bugging me. I haven't got exactly where I want it to be. There we go. Just gonna bring this line across here. Pretty much what we've done before. I'm gonna create a little loop, just gonna bring this up. I'm gonna bring a secondary one, sitting on top of that. So we're gonna stack them. So like I said you haven't got to do them all the same, you can stack them. And this top here, I'm going to make this quite sort of flat. So it's going to come to this nice kind of block that's going to sit on top. And once we've got done, it's going to create another separate layer. And I'm going to draw a snake around it now. So I'm going to basically going to start off with a line. Um, so I know kind of where I want. I'm going to tail to start a bit. I'm going to create this curve coming around this way. I want to loop around this way. And my curve up here. Maybe go behind this handle. Curve off. And then his face is going to be here, I think. And once you've got the one line, you can kind of sort of like start to thicken up, so you kind of get the right sort of body width. So I'm going to create this curve around here. You know, and it's old school, so you don't need to be massively chunky. But you want enough body to kind of get that sort of bottom, you know, the body pattern work. 
and the back pattern work, which you'll see. You know, as we sort of sort of start designing it, just kind of keep in mind the sort of shape so you can kind of fit everything in there. That's gonna go behind that handle. That's gonna go behind this bit, so you're gonna see that part of the handle. And it's always important to remember what details you want to show and which ones you don't particularly care about. Like this part here, I want to make sure that this is on show. So I'm deliberately making sure this bit goes behind this and not over it. And then this bit's going to go over. And I'll take one in turn. So it's going to go over, under, over, under. And then this one possibly over. I haven't made my mind up yet. I might switch around. I might go over for this one. I don't know. I'll see when I get to it. But just keep sketching it until you kind of get that sort of shape. And I'm liking how this kind of body's working now. It's kind of got a nice kind of flow to it. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to sketch in the stuff with the sketching pen first, make it a bit easier for you. So I'm going to sketch in this kind of oval shape of the head. And then coming off the bottom, I'm going to create this kind of V-shape. It's got a bit of a curve to it. It's going to be a circle in the middle bit just here for the eye. And if you bring a line just off here, pretty much coming sort of straight back, that kind of creates the top part of the mouth. And create a line, just come around the eye a bit and curve back down. Curve here, I'm going to create this little loop just coming back around. There's lots of different ways to do sort of snakes. Might add a little bit of nose on this one. Sometimes it looks nice. But yeah, it's just a real easy, nice kind of way of doing it. I'm going to create a little big line coming off the edge, just like so. And more importantly, you need to have these teeth. If a snake doesn't have teeth, it just doesn't look right. Now you can't have a gummy snake, it just doesn't make sense. And now we've got the here. We've got this like, you know, line here. I'm going to create this line through the body now. And this is going to give me a guideline of where I want to put his belly. Now the belly, I want to be slightly uh, thinner than I want his back. I want his back to be slightly thicker. So this space here, I want thicker than this space. And you can rotate the body. You know, you can go like this and bring this line around here and follow this right around to kind of just write a rotation. Um, I generally prefer not to do that. And a lot of time you see old school snakes and sort of dragon stuff, you often sometimes don't necessarily always see that. Um, I quite like nice. To, I quite like to fo uh, follow the pattern through. Um, it's just a personal preference. It's not a rule because I said you know you can do it both ways. Um, it's just I like doing it one particular way, and that's kind of how I like doing mine. So bring it around and just like I said, just keep my arm forward. And just try and make sure you know your back is wider than the belly. Basically, because the curves we're going to do in the belly are smaller than what the detail on the back is going to be. Remember, as you sort of start getting towards the tail, you want to slightly start getting thinner. I mean, it's not a massively long kind of, you know, sort of thing to make it get thinner. Basically, as you get kind of close around here, I then start making it thinner towards the end. You haven't got to like progressively get thinner the whole way through the body. Just as you kind of get to the end here, you just start to make it thinner. That should do the trick. And once you're done, fill the belly. I'm going to create these curves. It's my favorite way of doing the snake, you know, bellies. So just create these kind of nice curves. There's other kind of patterns you can do. You can just go straight lines. You can create any kind of pattern you want. You could have it sort of like, you know, this. I mean, you can just create any kind of pattern. As long as it's kind of repeating pattern, it will look fine. You know, but I'm just going to create these repeating semicircle shapes. That will just go the whole way through that belly. Just keep that going, just keep building it up. And keep them roughly about the same kind of sort of, you know, sort of size. You know, if they start getting really uneven, it's not going to look right. You know, I said old school is very much about pattern work. So when stuff starts getting a bit uneven, it doesn't always make sense or work with the style. You know, there are exceptions to it. You know, you can break the rules. You know, but um, it's a very hard rule to break. And, you know, it's a hard rule to make look good if you're making things uneven. So once you've got that done, I'm going to go into the back detail. So the back pattern, you can do lots, pretty much any kind of pattern work will work. I'm going to create this little loop just like this. And then shall I make one in the middle? No, I'm just going to keep this one simple. Sometimes simple is best. So I'm going to create this kind of like M sort of shape one. 
it's pretty much my favourite way of kind of sort of doing the snake back as well. You know, if you sort of see my old school snake tattoos, you'll probably often quite see that pattern in there. It's just what I like doing. And basically, just kind of repeat that whole way through. Once you start getting to the end of the turn, it gets a bit awkward to kind of get a little detail in there. Just kind of like put as much detail as you can where it's sort of similar to it. You know, don't worry about getting exact. It's going to create a little curve line. Just come off the back of the gum, just like so. And now we've got it done. I'm going to go to another layer. Black. Calligraphy. And I'm going to go over everything we've just done now. So I'm going to start with the snake. Like I said, don't worry about going the same speed as me. I know I generally do this quite quick, it's just because I've got years of experience doing this. You know, it's it's all about the end product, you know, if it takes you 10 minutes, fair enough, if it takes you 10 hours, you know, as long as you're having fun doing it, it makes no difference. You know, I don't really, I mean, I guess it's nice being fast, you know, when it comes to sort of tat tattooing and drawing and stuff, but um, I don't particularly see much reason to take much pride in it if the work isn't great you know I mean if you're going at speed and putting out good work then fair enough you know but to me it's just not I just don't see it as anything majorly special you know good work's good work regardless of how long it takes so just keep whipping these lines in once you get used to it you kind of get used to the motion your hand will start doing it automatically you just kind of like Start getting used to this flick. And that's generally when the speed will come into play. Once you sort of start getting used to things, you know, once you sort of start doing a certain pattern over and over, you'll get used to it like this kind of pattern here, this little curve. You know, I'm so used to doing this because I often do this, say, in like roses and stuff and other things. It translates really well because I'm used to doing it. I'm going to get this pocket handle on here. I want it to curve around just a little bit until the body kind of overlaps. Just keep throwing it in there. Just gonna get this back in here first. There we go. And once got that, get that secondary line just for that part of the belly. And I just make it easier getting your curves coming off of it. Just keep whipping them in there, like I said, just get used to that kind of pattern work. Now stuff like this is really good practice because, you know, this repeated motion will just make you really confident with this shape. You know, I mean, if you're sort of starting off, you know, sort of, sort of drawing tattoos and stuff, it's really good to get that hand of it because as you start tattooing, you'll start to learn to do that shape really effortlessly. Now this is, you know, where the experience comes in handy, you know, because it's repetition, you know, repetition basically kind of makes like muscle memory. You know, when I'm drawing now, I'm not even really thinking about it. I'm just letting my hand do the work and it's just doing it for me because it's so familiar because I've done it so many times. So now we've got the base part there. I'm going to start getting this blade in. Just going to draw up, hold it, create a straight line for me. Up, hold, straight line for me. And I wanted to go to that center part of the blade where it would have been, so it would be there. Then do it. And I'll start getting the rest of the blade in. And then I'll do the rest of the tails, we'll kind of get to those points. So now we've got that done, I'm going to get this tail line, so see if I can get this in one nice smooth motion. Once you get the hang of the eye patch, you can start doing that, you know, it's, it's really satisfying to pull up one massive long line, it'd be like really on the point. Um, but don't expect to get every time, like, even I sort of do, you know, you, you see me sort of every now and again, I double tap and go back. 
Now, sometimes you can do it in one motion, sometimes it doesn't necessarily work. It's really satisfying to do, but don't worry if you can't. It's not the end of the world. So we're going to end it. I'm just going to quickly flick on that drawing assist just for this one line. So I'm going to get this nice and parallel. Just for this pattern mark just in here. Lick it off so you're not doing it still. Just bring a little line just done there. So now we've got that done. Turn off that sketching layer. Don't need that anymore. You know, add a few more details as we sort of um, colour it in. Snake, I generally do a line for. I mean, you can do a little dot if you want, but it's a snake. You know, it's. Put that part. So I'm going to move this out of the way now. All right, I'm going to flip this one off for a sec, just because it's kind of in my way. I'll turn that one on, and then once, once it's shaded, I'll bring it all back and we'll go for it. So I'm going to create another layer now. Same thing as done for. Sketching, technical pencil. I'm going to go dark red. Um, this one's going to be highly symmetric. You know, it's got like the rose at the bottom. And then it's going to be sort of classic sort of kind of way. So I'm going to sort of bring this up. The same way I've done that last one. I'm going to bring this kind of curve up. I'm going to create this one box. I'm going to mix a few of the ones we've done before to make this one. So you've got that sort of nice diamond shape on the inside. Turn off your own assist. I'm going to create a nice curve handle like we've done before. So it's kind of mixing that into it. Create these little curves on the bottom part here, so it's kind of building that bottom bit up. Flick on drawing assist again, it's going to come to the bottom, just create a nice little pattern. I always like doing this, you know, it's very rare to do a dagger without, you know, a base part, you know, like this. I generally always have done. I'm going to create mine a little bit thicker because I want that to kind of match up to where the rose is because the rose is kind of going to be here. This is going to be the rough sort of positioning for the rose. And now I've got this done, I'm going to create a little loop just here. I'm going to create this nice long oval shape just here a nice one just above that I'm going to shrink this down just a touch like so now roughly about this kind of sort of like almost halfway just a little bit higher than halfway I'm going to create a little line just coming through like that and another old school pattern would I like to do I'm going to create this loop like this into another loop going there you know I love the kind of loop sort of patterns Across the top here, I'm going to add circles. So repeating circles, kind of creating that effect just there. It's going to curve off. Little circle on top. I think for this one, I'm going to make it a bit different as well. I'm going to just have this line come over here, so this part's going to be separate. And then you're going to come down to the rows. Now you don't necessarily have to do a symmetric rose. I'm going to do the base part symmetric and then I'm going to do the main centre part of the buds um, not symmetric. So I'm going to create this kind of nice kind of curved line like here. I'm going to kind of create a little wave coming inwards. So you've got this part just here. I'm going to create a little base part just there. I'm going to add the bottom petal. So the bottom petal is going to come across. I'm going to create a little wiggy line and build it up there. I'm going to create two petals just coming off here that are going to be a bit symmetric. So Wave line off of those. Fill in that sort of circular shape just on the side parts just here. Get out my second and third petals on the outside just there. And the fourth, fifth, just kind of curve around that side. And I'm going to turn your assist off. If I'm going to create this curve, just come around this way. This one curve in there. So it's kind of hugging the blade on the inside. Yeah, I like that. I might shrink that blade down just a touch. So if I go back on here, draw an assist. I'm looking at it now and I think I want to make that a tiny bit thinner so I can create this curve a little bit better for me. There we go. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Sometimes you look at it and sometimes you can just see a bit a few differences. So as it curves around there, Flip down again, just to kind of sort of match out the bottom line. Like so. 
then once you've got that done, you can add sort of petals on the outside. I don't want the petals to be symmetric. You can do if you want, but I'm in the petals, I'm in the leaves. I prefer my leaves not to be symmetric on the outside. So I'm going to do the V shape, a little bit extended. I'm going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's secondary one just here, I think. One, two, three, one, two, three. And a little kind of curve just off of here. Another one just on this side. One, two, three, one, two, three. One just up here, I think. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, I quite like that. So now I've got it done, I'm gonna go up. Turn on drawing assist just for a little bit. Black, monoline. You know the routine by now. I mean, this stage you probably haven't got to hear me say, you just know what I'm gonna do. Grab a little leaf of it just down there. Just grab everything we're just done. I mean, I'll do this on a separate layer, yeah. It's always worth double checking to make sure, like I said, you are doing it on a separate layer because it gets really annoying, especially in the next stage when we start shading in. You've probably seen in my other videos, I think I've made a mistake a few times and I accidentally do it and it's just irritating. Let's bring these lines in here. This line's just there. I'm just done there. So I've got pretty much all the symmetry bits first, and then I'll just come back and do the other bits. Get that curve pattern. Get those balls in there. Let's get these bit in here actually. Oh, just don't look right, they're not neat. Turn off drawing assist, and now we're just going to whip in this bit just here. Let's get this shaping in nice and smooth. Ah, almost. Yeah, I like that. It's not symmetric, but sometimes asymmetry is nice. And sometimes you get some good ideas. I'm looking at actually now, and I'm actually liking this idea of this diamond in the middle I'm seeing here. Completely unintentional, but I actually quite like the look at this. I'm going to throw this in here. Like I said sometimes the best things happen by accident. Yep, I like that. So I'll have to run assist and just whipping the rest now the bits that ain't symmetric. So look at these curved lines just here. Could create little loops around the outside. It's just important to get these two little lines just here, so it kind of matches up. Yeah, so part of the rows. And then get your leaves in there. And then I think that's all five of them, I think. I don't think we can go into a bit of shading. Just keep whipping these in there. One, two, three. One, two, three. Make sure your lines connect up, otherwise it's going to make it a bit awkward when we do the shading. Because um, you've probably seen it before, I use the uh, auto select tool. It just makes it really handy for cutting areas, it just speeds things up and makes it a bit neater. But if you have little gaps in your line, like here, it'll just select outside of everything, so it gets a bit annoying. So just try to make sure that your lines connect up at the end. Turn off the sketching layer now. And boom, so I'm going to move this one over a little bit just like this. Give you about the right size. Turn that snake one back on. And I'm going to space these out and then we're basically going to short shade these in. There we go. I think I'm going to make that skull a bit bigger. That skull looks a little bit small to me. Just give it in nice and solid. Right. Give me two seconds, I just want to position these right because they're going to bug me otherwise. So let's bring him over a touch. Let's bring that rose over a touch. Make him a touch bit bigger. And then we can bring Skullboy just over a touch. There you go. I like that. Now it's nice and spaced and 
have on it. So now we're done now, I'm going to come in, I'm going to start off the first one, I'm going to click on it, I'm going to click Reference, and it's going to create a little layer just underneath it. I'm going to go Automatic, oops, so that's Selection to up here, Automatic, and if you click and drag sideways, make sure the Selection Threshold is up in the 90s, because if you don't, you're going to get a annoying white edge. You guys ask me about it a lot of time, you know, when you sort of get, you get a annoying white edge running outside, that's how you get rid of it, make sure it's in the high 90s. I think I answered that question probably about 10 times a day. I'm going to use a spray paint tool for this. So I'm going to go selection. I'm going to select all the bits I know that I want pitch black to begin with. So I want that black. I know I want that black. I want that black. Most of that bit black. I want these bits black. And now black's very, very important when you're doing old school. So for these ones, I'm just going to color in bold solid black. Now you always, you always want to make sure there's at least one part that is solid black. And I'm going to select some parts that I want some black shading in. So I'm going to select these. I'm going to. Right, I'm going to have to each side separately actually because I forgot. Right, I ain't got in the middle, I can't do the. Well, I could always drag it over. Should I? No, I'm just going to draw both sides evenly. You can bring the uh, symmetry tool over if you want. I'm not going to bother. <laughs> so I've got a bit of black just kind of fading out here from behind these parts. It's similar on these corners just down here. I'm going to do just like this, like in that. And now I'm going to select the outside bit, little trick, and do that. Click invert, and that's going to select everything on the inside. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to put this nice little black edge just on there, and it saves me to select every single one of these little squares. Now we are done. I'm going to select this little bit here. A little bit black just on the top, nothing much. Black out that middle part just there. Let's take these outside parts here. And I'm not going to black these in, but I'm going to have a little bit of black just on each edge, just like so. I think that'll do it for the black on that one. I and mean, you can do if you want, which I might do. Just look a little bit of black from the bottom of that one. A little bit of black from the top of that one. That's one way of doing the uh, shine on the dagger. I'll do each one a little bit different so you kind of see different kind of variations. So I say do black work on that one. Gonna go reference now on the snake. Get all black work done on this one. So I'm gonna start off with these back. I'm gonna shrink this down a touch. I basically wanna go pitch black. For most of his back, coming quite close to the belly, but not quite touching it. I want a little highlight, just as we get to the little line by the belly. Now, not much of a space, just a little bit, but enough just so we can tell the difference between it. Now, I'm not going to bother the pattern work on this part up here. You can do if you want now, I'm not going to bother. Doesn't, I don't feel like it needs it, I quite like how it looks like that. It probably bugged me later, and I'm probably not doing it later. So it might be worth just doing it, but I quite like how it looks like that. But I know me, I'll probably change my mind later when I redo it. But if you like something, sometimes it's worth just kind of like doing it and just kind of letting it sit for a while and just see if you do still like it after a bit. So I'm going to do this blade a bit different. So I'm going to go black up from this edge. Quite a fair bit into it. I'm going to select the next one. I'm going to mimic that and bring that same way across like so yeah I remember what I said about the line work so you've got a little space down there um, I'm gonna select a little no it's gonna bug me on to reference layer calligraphy tiny little touch up there we go back down to the shading just pretend that never happened so what I'm gonna do here I'm going to get black and I'm going to colour in each bit and kind of leave this little space just between the pattern work which I quite like the look of. Keep the space about evenly. You know, if you're using the symmetry tool, you don't have to worry about it there for you. If you're not using the symmetry like me, just try to get roughly about even. You know, but again, don't beat yourself up, you know, if it's not 100% even. 
I'm going to go back down to the spray paint tool. I just want a little bit of black on the side part here. Just a little bit just there. Nothing crazy. I'm just going to select this part, the dagger part, just here. And I'm going to put a little bit of black just here, just kind of on the outside part of the snake's body. Nothing crazy, real simple. The rest of when doing color, I think. The only part I might not is just a little bit just on the front part of the nose. Yeah. The rest will do in color. So, on to the next one now. The next one is where are you? The rose. So, I'm going to select the rose underneath, click reference on it. Right, let's select a few little petals just to begin with. I'm going to go a bit black just on the inside part like this. I'm going to do this one on each one of these outside petals. So just a little sort of circular curve on each one. Just like so. Let's select these outside leaves. I want heavy black kind of about almost halfway up the height of them. Maybe just a fraction under half, but roughly about that. And a little bit of black in the blade, but very much little, so not as much as this one. You know, sometimes, you know, the amount of black you put really defines it as well. And black in this handle bit. And there's a few areas I know I want to black out now. I want to black out those areas. These outside little leafy bits just here. And this bit, I'm just going to select those for now. Again, I'm just going to put a little bit of black just on these. Not as much as the other leafy parts. And just as we get to the top here, I'm going to go black on the outside just there. Black on the outside just there. It gives a bit of sense of curvature to it. And I think that will do it for the black work on that one. So now we go into the skull. So we click reference on the skull, create a little layer just underneath him. Him or her. Depends on which one you want to do. So I'm going to have black up here. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this one in reverse actually. So rather than doing black on the outside, I'm going to have this black bit going right down the center. So you get a shine on the outside. Select a few areas that I know I want black. I know I want that black, I want that black. Eyes, nose, mouth, inner part, just there. So I know when he's pitch black. So those areas are going to black in. Little areas now that I know I want to get a little bit of fade out. So I'm going to sketch it in here. I'm going to go free hand selection tool. I'm going to select this little area here and this little area just here. Behind this because I want to create this little shadow behind it, but I don't want to go below. It just makes it easier to do. So now I've got a shadow going behind that blade. Bit just there. Now it's going to go automatic again. Select the whole skull now. Might put a bit of shadow just down here. A little bit on the edge. I'm not going to do too crazy with this one, but these kind of ones, um, sometimes simple is better, sometimes less is more. And looking at it, I'm really kind of feeling that because I'm really liking how this one kind of looks. Let's let these two parts see it. I'm going to have a bit of black fade from there. A little bit of black fade just from there, I think. And I might put a little bit of black just on the edges just there and there. Now it's going to be the black work on now. I'm going to do a bit of sort of design work inside the dagger bit on that one with the color. So lastly, now I'm going to go into the curve blade. Click reference underneath, up, selection tool. So again, I'm going to select all the areas now. I know that I want black. So I want those inside part handle bits there black. I want that black. And I would select it, but I'm going to black in these little bits here, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to do those separately. Make sure you're on a separate layer, yep. So I can blacken those bits and select that. Just go over these little parts just here. So I don't particularly want those in there. And now I'm going to do I'm going to select this side. And I want this black. A bit bigger. Fading off from this one. And then the other one. Symmetric kind of fading off from the other way. I'm going to select this blade. 
bit of blank just on the edge just there again just a little bit just there on this bit just like so I haven't decided I might have slip both here I'm just going to see how it looks sometimes it looks nice with a little bit of shadow behind it so I might put a bit of shadow underneath the banner yeah I like that a little bit just underneath the handle guard just there Let's let these two little butts of the banner just behind and I'm going to black from the outside like so. A bit of symmetry on this little section just here, I'm going to fade out there. And then these outside parts just here, fade out. A bit of black just like that. I'm going to set this top part, I'm going to bring a line across. Line across and create this little highlight just in the middle. A bit kind of sort of like mirrored sort of looking. And that will do it for all the black. So now we've got that, I'm going back to the start. Where's the first one we've done? The butterfly. So I'm going to go underneath the black work now. So you can see here you've got the black work. And I've got the line work, so the colour's going to go underneath that. So I come in here, I'm going to add my colours. So to start with, I'm going to select the colours that I know I guaranteed want. Click on here and make that sure they're selected to reference. So you're selecting the butterfly. I know I want that yellow. I know I want. That yellow, that yellow, that yellow, that yellow, and that yellow, that yellow. So I know I want those areas definitely in yellow. So I'm going to do that and I select this nice golden yellow and I put those in that way. Now you can just keep it nice and bold like this if you want, or you can get like a nice kind of caramel tone if you want, or like a brown. You can add a little bit of texture just on the outsides if you want. No, it's not necessary, but you can always do that. It does look quite nice. And it fits in with the old school sort of thing. I'm going to select these ones to begin with. I'm going to go reds next. I want red. Fade up from the top of these ones. This is just one of my den butterflies. I'm going to go a bit red on the top of this one. Same from these on the top bit. And then once I've done that, I'm going to come back in and just put a little bit from the side angle so it's kind of a bit of red coming underneath. I might just bulb those last ones in. Because we've got that black coming from underneath here, I'm now going to have a bit of red just coming this way. Just creates a nice little kind of highlight inside the wings. A bit similar here. So very really sort of dominating with red and gold. You don't always have to add loads of colours to make it look right. This is why I've done the invert thing earlier, because normally you have to select like this. If you do the invert thing, you can select the whole thing. I'm just doing it this way for no apparent reason. All right, get some good those. I'm gonna get a nice brown tone. So get that kind of caramel tone we've done. Bold down that color. And lastly, I'm gonna get a nice dark green. Just on those wings, and just a little bit in there. Just creating a few little places so you can have that colour kind of come through. So that's how you colour that one. Next, we're going to go into the snake. So I'm going to click on the snake, click reference, go underneath that shading we've done. I'm going to select that. Actually, no, I'm going to keep the body just actually um, in black. I like that. Sometimes you don't necessarily need a colour. But I'm going to select. Back little bit just here, so now I want some green on these. So I'm going to turn this down quite a bit because I want to get this nice kind of shape like this. But I don't want to come to the perfect end, so I want a nice kind of sort of faded edge. Now you can make it to a nice crisp edge if you want, but it's just one way of doing it. So it's going to keep marking these in on all these gaps. Like so, like so, like so, 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 so. And can't forget his head. Put a bit in there, look for little highlights on the edge. Now I'm going to select his belly because I know I want his belly 
red. So select each one of these. Now, there's a few different ways of doing this one. Um, I'm going to do it the quick way, but I'm going to show you a quick idea of how you can do it. Another way which is really effective as well. Um, just quickly to show you the concept. But I'm going to bold it in red because I like it nice and bold. Right, so now we've got that done, I'm going to go red. If you just go something like, um, say, the click-through monoline, what you can do, which looks really effective, is shrink it all the way down and do this in each one. And you leave like a little edge. It looks really nice the whole way through. But I, I'm going to go spray paint. I want my belly nice and bold the whole way through. Like that. And now we've got that done. I'm going to select the areas that I know I want golden yellow. So I'm going to select this part of the face because I want that yellow. I want that hilt yellow. I want these inside areas here. I'll leave that black yellow. I want that yellow, that yellow. And not that. So I'm going to colour all those bits in yellow. Select these areas. And now what in here is a nice kind of grey tone, which I quite like. So I've got a hint of grey on those bits. I'm going to go for a nice old school kind of bluish tone. And that's going to go in these spaces. I'm going to add blue in the eye. And I'm going to black out this area just here. And then what I'm going to do, which I generally always do, you know, it's just this little kind of V-shaped part with the tongue. I'm going to select this, go red, and just put a little bit of fade just between those lines just there. Real simple. That's how you do a snake one. So now we're going to go on to the rose one. So I'm going to click reference on the rose, make sure you've got underneath your line mark again. I'm going to go calligraphy monoline. I'm going to draw this and I want to get. Oh, the battery stopped going down. You're plugged in. I need to leave some stuff. Fingers crossed, we're going to have enough power to get through this. Let's just power through this so we kind of get it done. So, I'm going to do it for each one of these. I'm going to need that nice little highlight just around each side of the edge. A nice bold red. Now you can't go over colours, I'm just generally keeping the colours all the same so I'm sort of showing you how you can do different variations without um, going too crazy with colours now. Because sometimes, I mean I could sort of show different variations just different colours but it's kind of cheating. I want to show you how to do different designs rather than just different colours. You know, I'm focused more on that. You know, if you you know if you're doing on Procreate, you know, and you want to sort of switch colours around, you know, once you've done a colour, just select um, the hue and saturation, and just flick through different hues, and you'll see a bunch of different kind of effects. I'm going to select these little loop bits just here, and I'm going to do the same thing we just done there. So I'm going to leave a little space between the lines, like so, which I like. And I want to do this bottom part just here, red, because I love doing these bottom parts red. I put a little bit of red just in here. So see, once I've sort of done that, I'll carry that sort of effect through a few different parts of it. So it kind of brings a bit of symmetry to the whole design. And then I'm going to select the areas now that I want golden. So I want that gold, I want that gold. Gold, gold, gold. Gold. Do all these parts in yellow. Spray paint tool just to be a bit quicker. I might have a little bit of gold just on these edges just here. Yeah, I like that. And then we select the leafy bits on the outside. 
Gonna go from a green. And just there, there, so a little bit of green just fry as well. That's how you do the rose one. Just a little bit of yellow, just again, just on the top part, just there. And then we come to the skull. So I'm gonna maybe do, oops, click on a skull, click reference. Remember again, just again, just create another layer, a layer just underneath the shading. I'm gonna select all the areas now that I want yellow. I'm gonna give them a little yellow tooth, golden tooth, just there. It's gonna be a fair bit of yellow in this one. Just like that. Red there, red there, red there. Go red in there. So it's kind of these areas in red, just like that. Gonna get that caramel tone just here. Gonna get a bit smaller. Just come through there, just like that. And then what I'm gonna do, can you get me reds? I'm gonna go monoline. Shrink this down a touch. I'm just gonna put this nice curvy line in the blade. Just there. Select this area in the middle. I'm gonna go blue for this one. Make that a little bit bigger. No, I was going to select that as a bulb actually. Sometimes it's nice to sort of connect to the bottom, but yeah, I prefer it like that. So see, sometimes you don't have to go too crazy with that, guys. Sometimes simple can be really effective. And then lastly, onto the script one. Click reference underneath the bottom bit. Selection, so we want this gold, we want this gold. Gold, gold. Go for the airbrush, well, spray paint on the airbrush. Get those bits in there. I know I want these bits red. So I'm going to go red for those. These little bits here, I'm going to have in blue, I think. Now, so I'm just thinking about, you know, some nice traditional kind of colors. I'm going to get that caramel tone. I'm just going to come a little bit on the edge, a little bit on the edge, just there and there. The same sort of thing on this inside part, just here and there. And same with these last few bits, just running outside. And then what I'm going to do is go red, my line, get a nice small one. Um, this bit's a bit annoying, so I'm going to sort of try and match up with the outside part. So I'm just mimicking that outside shape line all the way through it. There we go. And you can have your light, you know, letter on the inside. I'm not going to put no letter in there. It's like a missing name. And there you have it, people. That is how you draw daggers. Lots of variations. So you've got the butterfly. We have the snake. We have the rose. We have the skull. We have the banner. So yeah, people, I hope that's helped you. I hope you like it. If you do like it, please leave a comment and please like. You know, it really does help these videos. And I really appreciate it. But for now, people, I am the Broken Puppet. And I'll see you next time. Peace.